So here's the neck portion, the lower portion, my charging cable. It actually tucks in, but I've kind of got everything unscrewed already. So I'm just going to take it, take it apart just to show you where I've got the top speaker mounted. This is the top of the helmet. I drilled this out evenly. And then I put a larger speaker in there. There's batteries in it, honey. <laughs> my, daughter, my daughter wants to play with this, which actually has. It's on breathing apparatus and microphone. I suppose I could have pirated it out of this, but I think I'd already done it by then. But here you go. Here you go, kiddo. Here. Here, now you can talk into the microphone. There you go. You have to push the button. Push the button. There you go. Okay. So all this unscrews, and maybe I'll unscrew that later and show you, but basically it's it's just a speaker mounted in there. Oh, what the heck, I can go ahead and do it. In the part one video, I think I might have mentioned that um, I used a Tackstar speaker um, in the top of the helmet, but actually it turns out I didn't. Um, I forgot that it was actually too big. I ended up using a 2004 Darth Vader uh, voice changer helmet speaker that fit perfectly. So if you do use the Tackstar speaker, you can, you're going to have to cut that hole a little wider. Um, so there'll be a little additional mods, but it should be able to fit okay. I basically have an electrically taped um, the speaker in there, and it had a a little setup where it made it very easy. It has this little dome around it. Um, yeah. So then the question is, well, how is this getting audio from here with no wire? That was the clever little workaround that I found, which was these magnets are metal. So we got a metal contact. So what I did was I turned two into positive and negative. So I think it's on this side. I think I've got a positive and a negative. And so those feed in here. And I had also taken apart this mask and weaved the wires. Hold on, Angel. Stand by. What? What do you need? Oh, no, Daddy's not going to do that yet. So, essentially, I stuffed the wire in one of these, stuffed the wire in another one of those, and then ran it up the edges and out the top to the speaker. So, this speaker is silent until, until I... Um, So this speaker's silent until these are connected. And now, just to show the example, that now I'll get the contact through here. I can hear it coming out of this, and you'll hear a disconnect. Now you don't hear it anymore. So it was a clever little workaround to get the to get this audio to go through the helmet. And then it was late only later that I figured out how to get it working on this speaker as well. Because originally when I tried to do that, two signals going to the same speaker might cancel each other out. So it was just kind of a dead, a very low tone speaker. So it was receiving two signals, so um, it wasn't working. So by adding that switch on the side, I then now can toggle between which signal I want, um, thus negating the need for this speaker, although this has a lot of volume with it because it's a bigger speaker. And um, it just kind of echoes around in the helmet too, so it's like extra, extra loud breathing. Okay. Okay, so this is a power button. 
Volume down, I think. Yep, volume up and mode. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And this, this mic came with that. So then as far as disassembling this, I've already got it unscrewed. So the first time you take this apart, it's a little ornery to try and get apart, but you gotta kinda jostle it out. And you have to take the sides out first. You can't take the middle out because it's held in by the sides, so. So now I'm gonna separate them. So there's nothing inherently connected to this. This originally was just a flat gray plastic covering the original speaker. And then luckily the, what I bought was one of those, one of those presenters, portable audio speaker, speaker sets. And I'll, I'll flash it up here on whatever it is. So anyway, I took that thing apart and found that it had a very convenient hole in the middle which then I was able to allow it to mount around here and then allow the buttons to stick out here by cutting, cutting this hole. Works wonderfully. Okay, we'll go see mommy in a second. Um, so, it involved some cutting. Original speaker is fed from this all right, let me go ahead and I'll switch back to the original. But yeah. So that shows it's still connected. Your original, your batteries or your battery pack is here. It feeds this little circuit board and this little switch, which then just feeds the speaker. It also, from the other side, this is the haphazard breathing when the helmet's off. That also feeds this board. And then all of it comes out to these speakers. So you have to snip these, snip these wires. Probably be better if you snipped them up closer than I did. But um, yeah. I don't think there was any difference between the two of these as far as positive and negative. I couldn't find which was which. Um, they, it seemed to work whichever way I did it. So I just decided on one to be negative and one to be positive. Um, so anyway, I just took, for the positive side, I installed my switch here, and then I've got my connection to the original, the original feed from here, and then for the second input, it feeds from, from my, from this system, so where the speaker out is for this. Now, I have it linked to this set up here on the back side because I'd already run this but you wouldn't even you wouldn't even need to run this you could just run it directly to uh, dr directly off the speaker out from from here from this setup thing which is right here um, you do have to be careful. I did end up having to resolder some of these things because the wires are small and they'll bend and bend and bend as you're working and then just break off. Um, so just keep that in mind. If you don't know how to solder, if that makes you uncomfortable, then this makes this a little more challenging um, for you. But I hate soldering. Um, I'm terrible at it, but uh, I managed to butcher my way through it. And um, determination is, is my best. So, so now we've got our our two sources that feed into this switch. And then this is the source, whatever source is selected, then feeds into the speaker. Now for the other one, this is just gonna go directly to both. You don't need a switch on it because it's just one is acting as a ground, the other one is acting, or one is acting as a negative, one is acting, acting as a positive. So one is acting as a positive, one is acting as a negative. I don't remember, I can't quite see with my glasses speaker that actually looks like a positive 
either way, you're changing the source as far as what's grounded and what's, what's positive. So, so for the other line, all you do is you take your, your negative line, you tie it to the other negative line, and then you just tie it to the negative one here. And they're all three touching at the same time. There's no switch. It doesn't matter because you only need one switch to complete a circuit. So that's that. And all I did was use some shoe goo, some black shoe goo, after just drilling a hole in the side. Just black shoe goo, and um, just kind of lined it up. It actually holds pretty well. So this is just to, um, if you're also interested in running another speaker to the top of your helmet, which, you know, that's, you don't need to, but if you want that extra audio volume whatever, you can still do that. Um, it's a bit of extra work, you know, knowing this first workaround, I would I would not have done that if I'd have known I could get away with this because that's what I tried to do first. But I'm glad it's like that because it's nice and loud. So all I did was fold back some of these flaps and then push, push it back down and fold it on top of the wire so it's nice and taut in there. So I've got the original feeds that come out from, from um, this source to here, and then since those were already touching here, I couldn't obviously connect them to the front speaker, so I just ran a separate cable that was small and just clamped it to the same area, so I'm just piggybacking. But yeah, so that's that's what this slew of stuff is. So otherwise, if you're not putting the speaker in the top of the helmet, you, you're not gonna ignore all this, just forget about this, because you're gonna wanna run your wires directly from here into this these purple wire setup so in order to accommodate this stuff i had to do some braking um this this is what you get out of the inside of your um auditorium portable speaker thing um the headset are mounted on the side of this so there's a headset a charging cable a battery. The battery is a great size. Um, the speaker, which I left out, it was it was huge. It would have been great, but it just it wouldn't fit um, in this setup because of this. It's this is it's too small, so I had to keep the original. Which the speaker is actually just a plastic. It's I think it's just a plastic film that uh, that vibrates. So it's it's the very lowest of quality, um, which is why I like the one on top of my helmet. But anyway, so then I just figured out a way to fit all this in here. I had to bust off a bunch of these supports in the front. No big deal. No loss there. Um, there may have been some other ones, but I don't really think it was all that. Yeah, some susu. Yeah, that's okay. So, yeah, so this, this worked out great. These will end up touching your um, the mouth part of your upper helmet so I ended up busting off these buttons I, or well I, sn I didn't bust them off I snipped them off um, which was a positive and a negative and I'll, I can tell you what, why that was in a second so this I just managed to work in to fit inside this console just gonna test in different ways but now that you see how I have it done it shouldn't be any problem for you. Um, so then all this kind of just crushes back together. But it holds this in, so you need to, um, actually this would have to go in first, but I did have to chisel out the sides of this because what you have on here is something important. This is your play button, essentially. Um, this is my SD card. Um, this is another audio in, I think. Is it audio in? No, maybe that's odd. That's audio out. So don't need that. And this is your audio in from your mic. And then this is the, um, of course, the charging cable. This one's the tough. Was the toughest one to kind of force to fit in here, but it worked. Um, and then I just keep this kind of hanging out. But again, chiseled out this side, cut out that front. Chills out the whole of this side because this is all wires. But all in all, 
I think it fit pretty well. I don't remember if there was anything I had to, oh yeah, it looks like I kind of, something for one of the board. There's this thing that sticks up on the board and I think that's why I chiseled this out. No big deal. I can end up, I can actually end up seeing the power light in there whenever I'm charging it. So I guess there's a plus there. Um, yeah. So I'm 90% done with this, I'd say. I mean, I can continue as is, but what I, what I want to do is do something with this play button. So here's, here's how the play button works. So let's turn it on. And by default, it's just in... I gotta swap back. By default, it's just uh, going to the microphone. And it actually keeps the microphone open when you turn on other audio. So I've got that card in here, and I've got two things on that card. One is breathing, and the other one is the Imperial March. And they automatically loop. It talks to you, but it's all in Chinese. So if you know Chinese, this that's this will help you, but the talking is useless if you don't know Chinese. And then here's your play button, which I had to, I had to rig away to get the play button to work. So I'll just unplug that mic for now. But conceptually, you can see that. So that's the other thing I want to do is um, probably put a switch for that mic because of the fact that it stays on while it's breathing, which is cool, but then also not cool for that same reason where it's getting feedback. So then you push it again. And again, this is a, it has a toggle or a toggle or a play pause. It's a very um, hard to manipulate while it's in the mask. I mean, it's I've got to do something through the front. And I'm, we'll, we'll see how that works out. I've got an idea, but we'll see. But play, and then toggle it down. I figure these lights are pretty cool if the helmet is off. I'll probably have to block them. I'll probably have to block these lights to not be visible while the helmet is being worn because it looks, it looks interesting, but it's completely inaccurate, right? But when you take it off to see flashing lights, um, kind of looks pretty interesting. It's just like something you'd expect, even though, you know, real in the movie, it wasn't there. But yeah, I don't, I don't care. I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm going to leave it. I've got a uh, set up as a two hour recording of the of the breathing and then it'll hit the song and then it'll loop back to the breathing um, and that's fine. Um, so if I really wanted to, I could just press play and then go out and it'll continue and I don't have to fiddle with it and it'll just keep looping. But um, it would be nice to be, be able to manipulate it at will. So it has a pretty nice... Um, the the little speaker thing about it has a pretty nice mic that comes with it. This is all metal, um, and this is a metal enclosure. I lost the I lost the um, foam cover for this thing, which is unfortunate because it really picks up on the on the whoosh, 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 um, on all the noise of um, the air coming out of your mouth, and that's unfortunate. But uh, I managed to wrap it all up in here. Um, the quality is great, but then the quality, of course, adds to its bulk. Um, but, you know, whatever. So, that's what plugs in there. And then I just run this power cord down the side. And I did a little notch out on the inside back here so it can hang out. And then I can just kind of pull it out. And then it would just, it would uh, um, require some manipulating to just kind of wiggle it and jiggle it back in there. And then it just kind of sits against my neck. It's no issue. And um, yeah, this this front part ends up pushed out a little bit more, um, but it's it's hardly noticeable. And I think I think I only end up I don't know if it's because I lost some screws 
or what, but I only end up using one screw for each side and it's sufficient to hold it all together. But, so, that's, that's how I did this. Um, granted, I'm not, this isn't a full, you're watching me do the process, but I've explained it and I think that's, uh, that's pretty sufficient. I mean, you can figure out how to snap those things off yourself. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to this, like I said, these buttons end up hitting the front face part here. So what I did was this piece comes out. It ended up having, it had a lip on it, um, which, you know, actually it was pretty cool at first because that lip pressed against those buttons and I could just push on the front of the mask and turn the device on and off or switch it to, switch it over to uh, Bluetooth or, or this, this other option to, um, play the music and stuff like that, um, and adjust the volume. I could do that by pushing on the face. So that was pretty cool, but it did result in a bit of a, a larger gap here. So to kind of clean up that gap, I ended up uh, snipping off this lip that was on there. So in the end, it all, it all fits together fine. I'm probably going to put some uh, gaffer tape right across, um, maybe across the bottom part of this or under this lip or something to uh, kind of block out those flashing lights. So to control the additional audio that's coming out of this board, there was a toggle switch that went up, down, and in. Very hard to manipulate in a setting like this. Um, tried to, uh, it just, it didn't work out. So I decided to open it up and made a bus button out of it, made buttons out of it. So... Let's just move this out. So here is where the toggle switch was. That was a toggle toggle push. Um, this is what's left of it. But it's, it's reliant on a kind of a complicated mechanism that slides and toggles around and hits on these different metal strips underneath. But what I did instead was pry that mechanism apart and then figure out what was what in there and uh, made a button board out of it. So just to show you what it does. And then this is your mode to toggle that on. Let me volume up. So now each of these wires is something different. Our green is the ground or our negative wire, essentially. And that feeds all the buttons. So the green comes into the first button and then I daisy chain it to the second button and to the third button. And then each button gets its own positive. So what I did was I made previous, next, and play. So now I'll press play. Or previous, or next actually I guess. Previous, either way and pause. So if you see this, the outside bit here, there's three points of contact here. Each one of those will be used. And so will this one here. So this is our ground. And I imagine it's probably the same on both sides because I'm not using the one on the other side. But this is where I fed my green line into. And then the middle, the middle strip, which you may or may not be able to tell focus wise, but my red line here, that's the play or pause. 
and then one of these is forward and one of these is previous. And then again, so this this little this little solder point is what actually connects to this middle bottom bit where I have the green attached. And um, yeah, it was just a matter of experimentation to figure out which was which. But you'll notice that if you try and do this, that if you cross touch some things, sometimes that it'll automatically power off, but it, it always powered back up. So wasn't too worried about it. So now I'm going to install this in the side of the helmet. I'll probably, I'm going to chop off the rest of this board first, cut off that end and maybe, maybe turn it on the side. I don't know. And I'm also going to wrap it in tape so these wires don't bend around because these are solid core wires. You bend them back and forth a few times, they'll snap in half. So I just folded over a piece of electrical tape front and back to keep these wires from sliding around and to um, keep them from being bent at their joint or, well, what shouldn't be a joint, but probably would end up a joint as at their solder point. So I don't want them breaking off. So, um, yep. And now, so for the back of the button board, I'm going to do the same. I'm just going to put some electrical tape over it so they don't move around and break off. And again, I don't want them to bend and flex here either. So I'm bringing this out a little bit. I've now cut off the bottom of the breadboard and I'm just gonna put some electrical tape around it to tidy it up. Okay. Now it's all taped up. I'm just gonna figure out where exactly the holes need to be. I'm gonna do it in the side of the headpiece here. It's the only viable place to fit these three buttons. But I'm gonna put them on the inside and they'll just barely peek out the outside. And it all should work out. We'll see. So alternatively, rather than putting buttons on, it looks like it's better to probably just leave it open like this. And each one of those are adjustable or touchable. And it does not con it does not clash with the back of the neck, so I don't even think I need to blacken it in. I'll just leave it just like that. I'm still good for my soldering points. I need to take this off, I can. Maybe I'll just save myself that any future pain and go ahead and snip a little.
Let's just make sure this is actually first. Put it there. Cable in there, but we'll see this. And how well this fits in the spot. Back seat's fine. Yeah, yeah, you know that's gonna do it. That'll do it. Okay, just gonna put in the charge cable. And we should be good to go. Start putting everything back together. Okay, I'm gonna take this up. The reasonable. Take a look at this actually. Turn around to get this in view. Okay. Right. Not sure how much pressure this is going to provide as a backstop, but we will find out. Take this down a little bit. Hopefully our finger pushers won't push this too far back to where we can't actually push with the fingers. power supply. You know what, I might actually do this. Just the weak dummy tag for putting up posters or whatever works well. There we go. Just keep them in place. I haven't had any problems with this on the board. As far as causing electrical shorts or anything, even though it's pushing against some of the side points on the back of the board. Here, I'll lift some of the wires because the uh, front piece that goes over this is pretty shallow. Otherwise, these wires are pain at the bottom. So, I'm just verifying everything works before I finish putting everything back together. Obviously, the microphone is it's working. And we'll check the other. Part. I'm going to use my buttons here. Pause. Other button. Pause. We're good. Turn it off and finish putting together. Okay. I'm going to see this right down alongside here. A little glue tack on the back. 
Chucky Thunder. These wires. I'll throw the speaker wires. Just throw it around like that. Squish it in. Got a good hold. I'm going to tidy up my speaker wires. Tighten it here. Just stuff them down behind this battery pack. Well, at least the venting ones. So I don't want to do that with the uh, solid core because those are uh, a bit more fragile. Okay. I'm going to take over this and then we put the pieces in together. Or piece it together. Make sure this screw house is open here. So, man, I think I'm good. Well, didn't leave myself enough slack. A little more. Okay. All right, so this has to go on first. And hopefully I don't need any more taken out for this. After adding that, this will soon tarp in. It seems to sit okay. Well, I guess okay is good. It does stick out a bit at the bottom, but it's the price of progress. side together. Just going back towards the front, so I really want it open like this and close that up. Not sure why that wasn't already cut down, but it is now. And my power cord. And my power cord. Get my little notch in the back. Something here. I'm gonna get a bit of pressure back here, but something I can't handle. That bottom button is really sunk in there, but I can get it with my finger now. It's not a critical button anyway, but I can push down a little bit. So I've cleaned up all the innards, gotten everything snapped back into place. It's a good tight fit. I'm going to double check again that everything works before I go ahead and screw everything back together. Yep, our mic works. Now our side buttons. Here's what they're looking like right now. Oh, what is this? A little bit of blue, I'll have to go in and clean that out, but aside from that, yeah, this one's kind of deep, but I can get it. This one might be a little tight. Just do a little push. Yeah, just push it over a little bit. Pop 
pause, play, previous, next, pause. Everything's good. Power off, and we're going to screw everything back together, and then this thing's done. I'm only using these two screw points because it's sufficient. And as many times I've opened this, I don't need to be undoing as many screws as they've got in here. To make these easier to push, put a little resin on here. This resin hardens with UV light. Okay, so let's try this out. USB to charge, just enough. Slide it behind my neck. Clasp. Power up. I adjusted. <laughs> let's see, let's turn this up. So it sits better. Otherwise, it was down here. Anyway, now for breathing testing. So again, this is playing what's on the this is playing what's on the uh, the card, the SD card that's in here. And I can talk over this, or I can pause it. Or I can go previous track. I'm done. This worked out well. Now we'll see how it sounds with the yeah. uh, with the separate with the second speaker.
toggle music back on. And for charging, to ensure I can see that it's charging, because otherwise there'd be a red light hidden in here, I ran a thick fiber optic through this little C area here and just drilled through and bent the fiber optic back to hover over the light. So it gives a uh, red glow. So that's how I added breathing and amplified voice and whatever else you want to play, Imperial March, etc. Um, built into this headset. It was, it was a lot of work, but now that I've got it done, I can do it a lot quicker next time, but, um, so it'll save you the hassle of seeing if you could, because this was, you know, a lot of it was figuring it out and a bit of a luck. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. FYI, when you, um, save your, um, your, uh, tracks for the, the Imperial March and for the breathing and stuff like that, I just pulled mine from YouTube, um, yeah, maybe at some point I'll, I'll throw the links in here if I if I remember or if I can find them. Um, but anyway, uh, when you when you do that, what I did was I went with uh, Adobe Edition and I increased the um, the decibel output on those because that bottom speaker is pretty weak. Um, so I had to I don't remember how much I had to do it. If I did it thirteen times, like a thirteen x decibel, whatever. Anyway, um, it vastly improved how loud it was. So. Uh, that's something to think about whenever you download those files uh, to go ahead and ramp up those decibels and save them. Um, yeah, and that'll, that'll, that should help you out. Anyway, so if this helped you out, go ahead and feel free to uh, subscribe and uh, leave a thumbs up. Cheers. Thanks.